Can you hear the sound of heaven? Like the sound of many waters It's the sound of worship Coming from the throne There are cries of adoration as men from every nation lift their voice to make his glory known, singing, Holy, 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 are you Lord. in the presence of our living God. The book of Isaiah chapter 6 and verses 3. Says, And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of his glory. Isaiah chapter 6 and verses 3. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Isaiah chapter 6 verses 1 onwards And in the year that King Uzziah died I saw the Lord sitting on a throne High and lifted up And the train of his robe filled the temple Above it stood seraphim Each one had six wings And two he covered his face With two he covered his feet and the two he flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Brothers and sisters, we are here before a thrice holy God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, a thrice holy God. We are here before a thrice holy God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, brothers and sisters. Here we are before our Lord God. A thrice holy God. Let us do only one thing right now. Let us worship Him. Let us worship Him in spirit and in truth. Let us worship Him. He is the Holy Lord. He is our God. Let us worship our living God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Can you hear the sound? 
of heaven like the sound of many waters it's the sound of worship coming from the throne there are cries of adoration and men from every nation lift their voice to make his glory known singing holy 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 are you Lord holy 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 Redeem, worship you now. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Brothers and sisters, wherever we are, kneeling down, prostrating, lifting up our holy hands, let us cry out along with all the elders and the angels, the seraphim and the cherubim. Let us cry out before our Jesus. Thrice holy God, holy, holy, holy are your Lord. Holy, holy, holy are you Lord. sisters what a beautiful time it is along with all the elders and angels as given in the book of revelations along with all the seraphims as given in the book of Isaiah we are all together crying out holy 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 are you Lord holy 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 are you Lord Oh Lord, 
Lord, you are holy. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. The oldest in angels bow, redeem, worship you now. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Holy. Sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving. Be every moment thine. Brothers and sisters, here we are in this beautiful period of Lent. A time for all of us, all of us, you and me, to draw closer to our God. And brothers and sisters, this is the time to draw closer to God. This is the time the church has given for you and for me, all of us, that we can draw closer to God. And uh, what I want to say is, every day is a time for us to draw closer to God. Because we just cannot take the risk to draw closer to God tomorrow. Today, I will continue the way I am. I will not change. Every day, every day, brothers and sisters, we need to examine ourselves 
and draw closer to God because it is in God, in Jesus that we have our security, we have our hope, we have eternity. It is in knowing God that we have eternity, in knowing God. And brothers and sisters, today as we are about to hear the word of God, may the word of God, that is God himself, the word is God himself, as we hear the word, we are adoring and worshipping the Lord as well. Let us all begin with a small prayer in Luke 24, 45. And the Lord, he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. And brothers and sisters, we pray that today Jesus will open our minds to understand the scriptures. The scriptures are always, always beneficial to us. They are a big blessing to us, brothers and sisters. As we know about the word of God, it's sharper than a two-edged sword. It's the word of God that admonishes us, teaches us, corrects us. And brothers and sisters, we are mere human beings prone to errors. Our flesh always draws us towards the earth. It's like the power of gravity. There's a constant battle between the flesh and the spirit. We need to understand what we are, who we are. And how much we need the word of God to instruct us, to build us up, to strengthen us, to guide us. So brothers and sisters, today the word of God that we are about to hear is taken from Acts chapter 24 verses 15. Acts chapter 24 verses 15. And it says, So I always take pains to have a clear conscience toward God and toward man. This is a very, very beautiful word of God. It says, So I always take pains to have a clear conscience toward God and toward man. Brothers and sisters, I know the word of God which says, Today, if you hear the voice of the Lord, harden not your heart. And we don't have to wait for the Advent season or the Lent season or any special season to draw close to God. And I pray that all of us, all of us, if you are far away from God, you will be drawn close to God. If you are already close to God, you will draw even more closer to God. Never limit ourselves how close can we come, how close can we be, we be to God. And brothers and sisters, our fight has been against sin. Our fight is against sin presently, and even in the future, our fight will be against sin. And brothers and sisters, to fight sin, we all know that the Lord teaches us, deny ourselves, that is important. Take the help of the Holy Spirit, very important. And another very big point that we are going to learn today is to have a clear conscience. Clear conscience. Clear conscience. Once we have a clear conscience, it becomes very easy to fight against sin. So brothers and sisters, what exactly is this conscience and where exactly is this conscience in you and me? I was just going through the CCC, the Catechism of the Catholic Church. And it says, conscience is a part of the heart. There is a paragraph which deals with moral conscience. Moral conscience. 
and it says that the conscience is the part of the human heart. No wonder in the book of Proverbs, in Proverbs chapter 4, verses 23, we find Solomon inspired by the Holy Spirit writing, Take care of your heart. Take care of your heart. Be very vigilant, for from the heart flows, flows the wellspring of life. Uh, it's a very, very clear-cut word. For from the heart flows our emotions, feelings, desires. And let us not forget, the conscience is a very, very important part of our heart. So in short, in this time, what exactly is your conscience and my conscience and what role does it play? A conscience tells us what is right and what is wrong. The first time when we commit any sin, especially serious sin, we trample our conscience. The conscience tells us that what we are telling is wrong. And then as we go on committing it, it becomes a habit. We become slave to it. I heard a preacher say this. When a small child tells a lie, the child cannot look directly at the face of the mother or the father because the child knows that what he or she is telling is wrong. And so the case with you and me. The conscience is like a signal system. Red light, stop. Green light, go ahead. Right and wrong. And this conscience is a part of our heart. And this conscience can also be built up or this conscience can become dead. So either of the two, this conscience can become a dead conscience or this conscience can be built up, brothers and sisters, built up. So even as we know that our battle is against sin, we know that it is against sin that we fight, especially believers. And especially the book of Revelation says in chapter 2 and chapter 3, again and again it talks about conquerors. It talks about repentance. It talks about repentance and then becoming conquerors. And brothers and sisters, if you and I have to fight sin... If we want to say that we have to become sensitive towards sin, sensitive, hypersensitive towards sin, that means we need a clear conscience. Our conscience has to be clear that what we think, what we say, what we do, our choices are God-centered and not self-centered and world-centered. It has to be God-centered. It is then that we are in the right direction. And brothers and sisters, again and again we find the word conscience, especially in the New Testament. And here in Acts 24, 15, we clearly say, we clearly see the importance of a clear conscience in two directions. One is towards God and the other is towards man. One is towards God and the other is towards man. The importance of a clear conscience towards God and towards man. And the word of God says, I always take pains that means the importance is felt. How important it is to take pains to have a clear conscience. When we sin, we need to humble ourselves, repent ourselves, repent for our sins so that our conscience is clear and we start afresh, anew. And we go on to become overcomers. 
Surely, brothers and sisters, for all of us, we need to take pain. We need to humble ourselves. That pain is a, a humbling of ourselves as we genuinely repent when we fall into sin. It's for all of us. And every day, we don't have to wait for Advent or Lent to come back to the Lord. Every day, the arms of our Lord is wide open to welcome sinners. Remember, He hates our sin, but He doesn't hate sinners. Is there to welcome us and to begin a relationship afresh to all who are hearing. Pray for yourself that you have a clear conscience towards God and towards man. Take the pains, humble yourself. If you are praying for someone in your family, near and dear ones who's in a big problem of sin, pray that that person has got a clear conscience towards God and towards man. And 1 Peter chapter 3 verses 16 says, And keep your conscience clear so that when you are abused, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. Again it says, keep your conscience clear. If you are in the truth, even if people talk false about you, truth will prevail. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verses 5 says, Whereas the aim of our charge is love that issues from a pure heart and a good conscience and sincere faith. So you can see the connection, heart, conscience and faith. Heart, good conscience, clear conscience and faith. 2 Corinthians 1.12 For our boast is this, the testimony of our conscience that we have behaved in the world and still more towards you with holiness and godly sincerity, not by earthly wisdom, but by the grace of God. When the conscience is clear, our behavior is holy, there is sincerity, and all that is powered by the grace of God. When our conscience is clear, when our conscience is good, our choices are holy choices. There is sincerity, there is truth. And all this is powered by the grace of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verses 12 says, Thus, sinning against your brethren and wounding their conscience, when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Here it says, if we are sinning purposely against our brother or sister, what we are doing is we are wounding their conscience. And we are also sinning against Christ. Brothers and sisters, what do we do today if our conscience is dead? Somebody was sharing with me, Cain killed Abel because his conscience was dead. He was jealous of his brother. He had harbored sin. He knew it was wrong to be jealous, but he kept on being jealous and the fruit of that jealousy was murder. And that is true for you and for me. When our conscience is dead, we fall into sin. So brothers and sisters, what is the first step to revive our conscience, to move towards clear conscience? Number one, Hebrews chapter 9 verses 14 says, How much more shall the blood of Jesus, who through the eternal spirit, offered himself without blemish to God. Purify your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And brothers and sisters, it clearly says, Hebrews 9.14, the blood of Jesus cleanses our conscience from dead works so that we can serve the living God. So that we can serve the living God. So that we can serve the living God. So here, First and foremost, repent sincerely on our sins. If we know something is wrong by the word of God, by the preaching, and our conscience is telling us what we are doing is wrong, repent sincerely. Then, continuously cleanse your conscience, your dead conscience, in the blood of Jesus, so that we can serve the living God, so that we will move in the direction of God. 
Hebrews chapter 10 verses 22 says, Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with a heart sprinkled clean from an evil conscience. So here the word is not dead conscience, from evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Brothers and sisters, it's very surprising how immediately after the blood comes the water, which is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Yes, brothers and sisters, water, which is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Even in the Old Testament, over the sacrifice, a drop of blood was followed by a drop of oil, which signified Holy Spirit. So the blood of Jesus is there to cleanse our conscience and the Holy Spirit is the living waters that cleanses our conscience so that we can start living for God on a daily basis. And brothers and sisters, I just advise you, I heard it from a senior man, a senior servant of God, repent daily. That We, we, we hear it uh, from the Ignatius, Ignatian examination of conscience. Examine your conscience daily so that daily when we repent, it becomes very easy. And on periodic basis, go for confession so that we receive grace. And to have a conscience that is strong, Romans chapter 2 verses 5 says, they show that what the law requires is written on their hearts. While their conscience also bears witness and their conflicting thoughts accuse or perhaps excuse them. So here it clearly says that we need the word of God to be written in our hearts. Every day we need to spend quality time with the word. Brothers and sisters, in our fight against sin, a clear conscience is a must. In our fight against sin, a clear conscience is a must, brothers and sisters. If we have a clear conscience, it will be very easy to fight sin. It will be very easy to serve the Lord and not serve Satan. When we say no to sin and the temptation, we are serving God, brothers and sisters. Wherever you are, brothers and sisters, I urge you, place both your palms over your chest. Remember Hebrews 9, 14, Hebrews 10, 22. The blood of Jesus is always there with the Holy Spirit. Let us ask the blood of Jesus to cleanse our dead conscience so that we don't serve Satan, we can serve the living God. It's your blood that cleanses me It's your blood that gives me life It's your blood that takes my place In redeeming sacrifice And washes me Wider than the storm and the storm, my Jesus, God's living sacrifice. Brothers and sisters, if we want to serve the Lord and not the desires of our flesh and not our temptations, not our passions, what we need along with a strong will and a willingness to die to ourself is a very clear conscience, an active conscience. It will be a guide to us, telling us to say yes or to say no. It's your blood that cleanses me. It's your blood that gives me life It's your blood that takes my place In redeeming sacrifice And 
washes me whiter than the snow and the snow my Jesus God's living sacrifice brothers and sisters we have to tell ourselves it's enough it's enough serving Satan whenever he tells us whatever to do wrong we do it it's time that up to the end of our life we serve our living God it is possible that we can still fall into sin but rise up again repent and come back to the Lord hate sin with all our heart love purity love godliness love sincerity and that is possible only with a clear conscience wherever we are brothers and sisters tell Jesus to cleanse our conscience our heart from all the impurities that has been accumulated over the years and make it a practice every day tell Jesus according to the truth in Hebrews 9 14 to cleanse our conscience from dead works it's your blood that cleanses me it's your blood that gives me life it's your blood that takes my place in redeeming sacrifice and washes me whiter than the snow my Jesus God's living sacrifice my Jesus God's living sacrifice in your precious blood make us holy Lord Lord help us to serve you with all your heart hallelujah 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 praise the Lord praise the Lord hallelujah hallelujah as we come before this mighty Lord, as we have praised and worshipped and honoured him and given him, him all the glory, and here now we are standing in the gap, taking this time, the opportunity to intercede for ourselves and for our brothers and sisters throughout the world. Yes, Lord. As we recite the Divine Mercy Chaplet, the opening prayer. You expire, Jesus. Jesus. But the, the source, source of life, life gushed forth for souls. And the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O fount of life, unfathomable divine mercy, envelop the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. O blood and water which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fountain of mercy for us, we trust in you. O blood and water which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus, as, As a fountain, fountain of mercy for us, we trust in you. O blood and water, which gush forth from the heart of Jesus, As a fountain of mercy for us, we trust in you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, 
Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He went down to death. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body, and life everlasting. Amen. Heavenly Father, in this first decade, especially pray for the unity and peace among the people. Yes, Lord, we are all your children, and we are one in you. And we know that when there is disunity, the Satan takes control over us. And he allows us to do the things which is not pleasing to you. For the God here, I surrender people around the world that they be united with you and you only. And let them lead the lives according to you and pleasing to you. Father God, we pray for the peace, the unity among the people in this decade. Our Father, we make this prayer in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. Eternal, Eternal Father, Father, we offer, we offer you, you the body and blood, soul and dignity of your dearly beloved Son, Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us, son, and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us, son, and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us, son, and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us, son, and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us, son, and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us, son, and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us, son, and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us, son, and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us, son, and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us, son, and the whole world. Loving Father, in this decade, we pray for the conversion of the hardened souls. Jesus, mercy, we come to you. Lord, it is not your will that even a single soul perish. We offer the nearly seven billions of souls throughout the world. You are the creator of every human being. My Father, thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love towards sinners, towards us, towards all of us. And every person who's watching this telecast, thank you for showing your mercy towards us. Loving Father, we pray in a very special way for our brothers and sisters who are having hatred and bitterness towards others. We pray, Father Abba, that all of us will learn to be merciful to those who give us pain. Let us all know that we have found mercy from you. So we need to show mercy to others. In a time where relationships are crumbling, where there are many deceptive people around, where truth is being trampled, where wickedness is going from pillar to post, increasing. We know that people hurt us, cause us pain. In this scenario, Father, we ask of you to give us all the grace to be merciful and not to hate anyone, even though you, not, you do not tell us to hug anyone or enemies, but not to hate them and to forgive and pray for their salvation, to pray that good comes in their life and to their family even though they have caused us so much harm and pain. They have lied. They have destroyed our reputation. They have cheated us. They have abused us. Lord, give us the grace to be merciful to them. 
Lord, every day is special. And you look at unforgiveness very seriously, Lord. Brothers and sisters, ask grace from the Lord as we are in the presence of the Lord to forgive those very close to you who has given you a lot of pain. Every day is like an advent. Every day is like a Lent. If today you can forgive, don't keep it for tomorrow. And even as not only human relationship, but nations are, there is no peace and there is such a lot of disturbance. We ask of your mercy, Lord, and praying for the grace for people to forgive those who have hurt them and caused them pain. We make this prayer, Abba, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Eternal, Eternal Father, we, we offer you the body, body and, and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ in atonement, atonement for, for our sins and those, and those of, of the whole world. world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Father God, in this third decade, we pray and lift up to you, especially the students who are going to appear for their exams. Yes, Lord. The boards, the entrance, and as well as the school exams, the college exams. Father God, fill them with your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And let all the fear of the exams be taken off. And give them the spirit of peace. Yes, Lord, we surrender the parents. Let they be a source of encouragement to them. Let they encourage their children and not discourage. And let the parents not compare their children with the other children. Because every child is special. Yes, Lord. And every child is given, given the um, wisdom which you have given them. Yes, Lord. But Lord, we pray for children to really concentrate and really take efforts to study and to do well in their academics yes, so that Lord. they don't regret in their future. Yes, Jesus. Father God, we pray for the mighty anointing of the Holy Spirit upon each and every child of God so that they do their exams well and glorify your name. Our Father, we make this prayer in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. Eternal, Eternal Father, Father, we offer, we offer you, you the body and blood, soul and, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Loving Father, in this fourth decade, we pray especially for all the families throughout the world. Families who are going through relationship problems. Families where there is no peace. Families that are going through financial problems, joblessness. Families that are afflicted by powers of darkness. Families that are really destroyed by negative forces. Families where sin is abounding openly. Father, we pray for your mercy upon these families. Place these families in the divine mercy ark. As Saint John Paul has said, 
families to be in the divine mercy ark and protected and blessed may your mercy protect all the families throughout the world our own families and father we also pray for the conversion of all the sinners all those who are in addiction to sin of various form addiction to sin of various form pornography drugs alcohol mobile social media everything which is taking away their heart away from you father please have mercy on them we also pray for all the youth and children throughout the world we pray for the middle generation and the older generation who are also drawn into various sins without the knowledge of others especially through the social media we pray for the middle and the older generation as well lord especially through the mobile be merciful to us lord we make this prayer in the name of jesus christ our lord amen eternal, eternal father, father We, we offer you the, the body and, and blood, soul, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of His sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of His sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of His sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of His sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of His sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of His sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of His sorrowful passion, have mercy on us. us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world heavenly father we thank and praise you for your love and mercy which you have showed on us and in this last decade we present to you our lives let our lives may be more and more pleasing to you and i pray that people who are attending the service be encouraged be delivered be cleansed be anointed with the power of the holy spirit and let them look to you for everything and not get distracted by any negative force as we all know that we are uh, brought with a price and the price is your only son jesus christ who shed his precious blood on the cross for our sake for our sins yes father god you are in this time we place all our intentions yes lord and all our needs our petitions yes jesus our father we make this prayer in the name of jesus the lord amen eternal, eternal father, father We offer, we offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake. Of a sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake. Of a sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake. 
of his sorrowful passion and mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion and mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of a sorrowful passion and mercy on us and on the whole world holy god holy mighty one holy immortal one and mercy on us and on the whole world holy god Holy mighty one holy immortal one and mercy on us and on the whole world holy god holy mighty one holy immortal one and mercy the closing prayer eternal god no mercy is endless and treasury of compassion inexhaustible look kindly upon us increase your mercy in us that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become disappointed but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will which is love and mercy itself amen Brothers and sisters, here we are at the feet of the Lord. Wherever we are, brothers and sisters, thank God for blessing us through His presence. Wherever we are, let us kneel down, raise our hands, let us prostrate before the Lord and receive the final blessings. Oh, sacrament. Most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine, O sacrament, most holy. O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament. Oh, praise and all thanksgiving. 